In 2009, Bandai America's Super Legends Retro Fire toy line proved to be a surprise success with both kids and collectors. I can remember shortly after they were introduced, toy shelves were just clear. You would see the tags and the 999 that was sitting there, but you would never see the associated Megazord. In fact, it wasn't until early 2010 when Power Rangers RPM was transitioning over into Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Redux that you could find the shelves sparsely populated with actual retrofires. I mean, these things were really, really popular. Up until 2009, we had never had a dedicated action figure of a Megazord. There had been some, you know, four-inch gimmick-filled ones where, oh, look, the neck and the shoulders can turn. But we never had an action figure that was fully posable just like a Ranger. That's never happened before. There, I remember the Lightspeed Megazord got a, like a seven-inch version, whatever it was, but the deluxe size one was more posable than that, so no thank you. It hadn't really been an affordable posable Megazord action figure. And then 2009 rolls around and Bandai America caught us completely off guard with this short run of three inch action figures of the original Megazord, the Wild Force Megazord, and the then current High Octane Megazord. They weren't perfect, but wow, we had them and they were a hell of a start. And they were really awesome and can we have some more please? Oh, by the way, Bandai America, where the f are my Retro Fire Titan and Thunder Source Megazords? I waited a year and a half for those things to show up, and they never did. I saw promo pictures all over the internet, and these things were going to be really awesome. The Titan Megazord is one of my favorite designs, like, ever. And the Thundersaurus Megazord, the way you dolled that thing up for Retrofire, that thing looked badass. That was incredible. And, like, it never happened. I was eagerly anticipating those things, and you guys, seriously, you let a lot of people down on that, not just me. So, if you guys still have the molds and the designs and things like that, please give us those, because they look awesome. Unless they had serious flaws with them, give them to us. Please. I insist. Actually, that Valve Max Megazord didn't look too bad either. It was in need of an upgrade. I wouldn't mind getting one of those either. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to introduce to you the second wave of the Super Legends Retro Fire line the Delta Squad Megazord, and the Jungle Pride Megazord. Unlike the 2009 releases, the 2011 releases do not come with a display stand. Denied. You can check out most of the surface details on CollectionDX.com. I'm just going to get into the major stuff here. So the major stuff has to deal with posability, and I just wanted to point out that all of the edges, at least on the Delta Squad Megazord, they're a lot softer, they're a lot uh, a lot more gentle than they were on the uh, 2009 releases. It's, it, it, it does kind of give it a slightly different feel, but mm, what can you do? But they do have nice surface detail though, still. I mean, despite the rounded edges. They've got uh, the hubcap wheels, they've got the number three there, They've got um, a little bit of back paneling there, skid plate back there. They've got SPD and the numbers all over the place, SPD, SPD. They even tried to put the SPD police badge there and there, but, you know, fail. Call me paranoid if you must, but I swear all the red that you see on here is for the, the, the police lights, except for right under the upper torso here where I swear they used a slightly brighter, lighter shade of red compared to all the other red on here. I swear that's different. I don't know if it's just the lighting in this room or what, but I would testify in court that they used a different color of red in there because the red they're using is just, it, it just looks different. So, <laughs> assuming that they used two different colors here, here's my problem though, as far as coloring is concerned. You notice the silver cockpit right there of Delta Runner 4 and the silver cockpit of Delta Runner 5. The cockpit was not painted on 2 and 3 and it's black here on number 1, Delta Runner 1. Here's the problem though, you flip it around not only is there no cockpit, color, you see the silver right here? Not only is there no silver, but look, there's no pink. It literally stops at the halfway point. And the same thing with yellow. And by the way, 
That pink line should be running all the way down here to cover that wheel. This yellow should be covering all the way down here, too. But they don't do it, so they give us a little up here, a little up here, and they crap on us back here. So what's up with that? Possibility is as follows. Both shoulders. God damn it. Oh. This thing pops off like there's no tomorrow. I, I took this out of the box and it popped off. And the worst part is, it doesn't fit all that well on there. It's a good thing it's made of PVC or else it probably would have cracked in half by now. Oh yeah, by the way, this thing can pop off in case you put too much pressure on it. I think the left shoulder can pop off as well. In fact, I know it can. Yeah, the left shoulder armor can pop as well, but it just hasn't happened yet. Posability. Let's try this again. The head can turn side to side. All the joints on mine are still nice and tight. The waist joint is kind of interesting. Instead of just a flat line straight across like they did with the previous three releases, they actually separated the upper torso from the lower torso, and they gave us the, the nose of Delta Runner 1. It's actually a little separate, which is nice. And again, from the back. Yep, that, that's that's pretty appropriate. That's that, that's a nice stylistic choice right there. That's uh, that's artist discretion. What's that word? Whatever it is. Anyways, uh, both arms up and down at the shoulders. The wrists on both of them also turn. There's a P right there, you know, patrol. And oddly, there's another P right there for patrol. It's supposed to be an S and a P, not a P and a P. Hmm. Anyways, so anyways, you've got the shoulders back and forth, very nice. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, even in 2011, two years later after they've gotten all that feedback, we still have asymmetrically posable arms, which means that one arm can do one thing that the other cannot. The right arm can turn in and out of the shoulder, but the difference is it can also turn in and out at the elbow. God damn it. I am not reshooting this. Okay. Same thing. Arm goes in and out, but the elbow does not turn there. Now here's the other problem I have, and that's with the left shoulder armor. Now the was it the judgment board thingy or whatever this thing is, is supposed to be attached to the lower arm. I don't know why it is they couldn't have done it because the way they have it now, this is attached to the upper shoulder upper arm, I apologize, but look at this. This arm can bend outwards a little bit. I mean, you take this off and it can bend a lot, whatever. I'm sure the same thing is true over here, but you can't move the arm any you can't move the lower arm any further out than that because that thing is in the way. What the hell's up with that? That's weird. The legs have at least the hips have those excellent little, uh, those those two axis joints in there again, which is just, you know, awesome. So you get the knees, a little over 90 degrees. Both ankles can go back and forward a little. And then the legs can go forward, backwards. And if you tilt it forward, then you can tilt it outwards. But it can't do the splits very easily. Actually, can't do the splits at all. So posability with the... Damn it. Delta Squad Megazord is, well, pretty much the same as it was in 2009. The Delta Squad Megazord comes with its signature Mega Blaster. You know, I don't really remember it being called the Mega Blaster. I thought it was like Siren Blaster or something like that. Anyways, yeah, it comes with this thing. Now, the funny thing about the Mega Blaster is that previously it was just tucked away in the lower right leg in the little pop-out compartment, and it was just a little, little police pistol, you know, and that was it. Well, check out the size of this honking thing. <laughs> this is what Retrofire is all about, ladies and gentlemen. They upgraded the Mega Blaster into, well, an actual Mega Blaster. They turned it into a frickin' rifle. Look at the size of that thing. Seriously, I saw the promo pictures for this thing and the New York Toy Fair uh, 2011 footage that we shot a couple months ago. I saw that, and I was like, that is so funny. And you know what? That's what Retrofire is all about. You know, exaggerating things a little bit so you get the posability. This is exactly what this toy needed. 
Anyways, just like with the 2009 releases, and you know, obviously because of the asymmetric arm designs, this toy is only designed to fit a limited number of posing options. Very limited, in fact. You put the arm to the side like this. By the way, the Mega Blaster is made of PVC. Turn the, arm, turn the hand like this, and you fit it under there like that. That is where the arms are asymmetrically designed. That is the specific pose that the Delta Squad Megazord is meant to get into. I shot a couple of different photos on uh, Collection DX, but uh, yeah, that's why the the I'm sorry, why the arms are shaped like that. You can actually get it into a shooting pose. I'm not going to put too much effort into it, but you can. Uh, let's see. This is pretty much the only pose that this thing was designed for. It's pretty much what the whole the whole toy was designed for is to be able to accomplish something along those lines. I lol at the new Mega Blaster. That's great. Here's something really bizarre. This makes the third Jungle Pride Megazord toy that I've ever owned. I've owned the deluxe-sized one, I've owned the transforming one, and now I've got this. I'm not even a big fan, that big a fan of the Jungle Pride Megazord look, you know, the, how it transforms the things it does. I'm not a big fan of this, and yet I've got three of these now. Weird. The de level of detail in this is just spot on. Let's see. Spot on. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> it's it, it's actually pretty sweet. Even now the little sunglasses there. No, the sunglasses do not flip up and down. But the proportions on this toy are pretty awesome. The only thing that I'd say is missing on this whole thing is that they actually didn't paint the black fanny pack. They just left it purple, which is made of PVC, by the way. And then they disregarded the silver and the, well, actually, it's white. They disregarded the white and the orange underbellies. And really, that's the only thing that's really missing from this set is, is, as far as coloring goes. Everything else is just spot-on awesome. Well, they forgot to put the silver on the, the, the knuckle claws, but I'll get to that later. Posability is as follows. The head, side to side, and just a, just a hair up and down waist joint all the way around very nice the skirt on the front and the back again made of PVC the knees both 90 degrees which is always awesome and a very generous ankle joint not only do they tilt up a little but they tilt down too that's pretty sweet that's that's very very nice very nice big poseable and the footprint's actually rather wide. Um, even though the, the footprint, even though it's tilted at a slight angle this way, uh, it does, it kind of sort of forces the legs to be splayed a little bit, but because of how the, the, the uh, how the hips can pose, you can actually put the legs together. Um, and of course, you know, not only do you have forward and backward, but you've also got out to the side, very awesome. None of the other retro fires can do that. And you've also got a swivel joint in, well, not really in, but very much out. Okay, posable in the arms. Shoulders, forward and backwards, very nice. You also get in and out, very nice. You've got a swivel, you can turn this side to side. And you've got another swivel over here. You've got wrist joints, and you've got an elbow on both sides. Now, what part of that seems a little strange to you? Pretty much the whole thing, because, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, this is the first Retrofire Megazord that has completely symmetrical posing, posability to it. Whatever you can do on one side, you can also do on the other. None of the other Retrofires do that. They're always... Uh, you know, this arm could only turn in and out, or only this arm could turn, or only this wrist could turn. And But you wouldn't be able to do it on the opposing side. Like, this shoulder might not be able to pop off, but this one could. By the way, look at that range of motion. <gasps> this is made of PVC. 
So the the thing that I, that bugged me about the Jungle Pride Megazord and all its toy incarnations is that the Jungle Pride Megazord, unlike any other Megazord up to that point, or even really since, is an agile fighter. It places an emphasis on martial arts rather than on just clawing the enemy to death. And that's not something that any toy version of the Jungle Pride Megazord was able to accomplish. So this, this is what the Jungle Pride Megazord should always have been like. It should have been a thin and agile and strong fighter. That's always what it was about in the show. And finally we get in the toy version of it. And it comes with awesome posability. Let's see, I'm just going to throw something together here real quick. How can you disagree with that? Okay, let's talk about weapons now. The Jungle Pride Megazord is the first, and thus far only, first-line Megazord to ever not use a sword and shield. Instead, it uses a weapon which is known as the Jungle Sansetsukan, which in Japanese means three-section staff. Actually, this originated from China, where it's known as the Sanji Gun. Anyways, yeah, it's got a solid section here, solid section here, solid section here, and it's tied together by two... Uh, floppy sections. Now this whole thing is a single piece of PVC, but there is, because it's thin enough, you know, you can actually twist this a little bit. But, you know, don't put too much pressure on it or else it'll break. Anyways, you can put the Jungle Sansetsukan, please forgive me if I'm saying that wrong, into either hand. Okay? Because the hands are shaped exactly the same. And you can twist it in any direction when you want. And you can, of course, you can put it you can have the hands grip, you know, not just the middle section, but actually the other two sections. Or you can have it grip in the, 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 the two chain sections here as well. Actually, it'd probably be rope. Anyways, uh, yeah, a giant robot rope. Hmm. So you can have it grip here, you can have it grip here, you can have it grip here. Or, I don't want to break it, because this is actually pretty thin. It's supposed to be, and so are the thumbs. But you can also have it grip... Don't fight me now. There you go. You can actually have a grip with both hands at the same time. That's pretty sweet. And again, it's completely due to how poseable those arms are. Nice. Now, in the TV series, the Jungle Sitsukon was the only weapon that the Jungle Pride Megazord used. But despite the fact that it was composed entirely of wildcats, they never used any of the 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 feet the mouths and the feet or the the horn up here or you know spikes or anything like that there's one thing that they seriously overlooked that I thought they seriously overlooked in the show and that was these rather convenient and somewhat blurry claws right on the knuckles there they never used it yeah it did punching but you know they they never used the claws to actually cut through anything that was something I thought that they seriously overlooked well, prepare to have your mind blown away. Can you really prepare for something like that? Because Bandai America gave us these giant claws which can fit onto the back of the hands. It's not that it grabs onto them, but it fits into the back of the hands and actually covers up the little knuckles right there. And not just one, but two of them. Unreal! And... X-Men, Wolverine, blah, blah, blah. But still! Hello? I can't believe they did that. That That is forward-thinking, Bandai America. That, that, oh my god, that is so awesome. But the only thing you can't do, about the only thing you can't do with this set is, well, you can turn it at the waist, but you can't do, really do the savage spin in a convincing fashion because the arms can't go up any higher than that unless you take up the shoulders. This thing is awesome. Oh, one last quick thing before I move on to my commentary. I really like the packaging on these things, because not only can you see it from the front, you can see it from the side, the side, and the top, and the bottom. That's exactly what collectors are looking for. They want to see those details. They want to look around and decide if it's worth it or not. But the only thing I dislike with the packaging, by the way, I love that they have a series bio there, or the series summary right there. That's always awesome. For the specific show that the figure comes from. It's not the Power Rangers Samurai summary. It's the Power Rangers Jungle Fury summary. That's cool. 
The, the, the only thing I disagree with, again, Power Rangers Samurai, Retrofire has nothing to do with the series it's released in. Just use the generic Power Rangers name, and you're good. Tell us which series this character originally appeared in, but that's it. So, you know, I don't like the Samurai Blade and then the, the Kanji symbol sitting in the back like that. That's, that's unnecessary. But otherwise, very awesome packaging. Backtracking a little bit here, in mid-2010, we learned that Saban Brands had purchased the rights to the Power Rangers franchise back from the Walt Disney Company, which had originally purchased and thus absorbed Saban Entertainment, which had created the franchise to begin with. Now, in mid-2010, we were right smack in the middle of the reissue of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and we had all of these original toy designs, which didn't appear in 93, I mean, same characters, just brand new molds and toys and all kinds of cool stuff like that. But then, in case you missed it, there were plans for a whole bunch of secondary releases in fall and winter, all the way into early 2011, when the next series would come out. But that didn't happen. When Saban bought back the rights to the Power Rangers franchise, pretty much every single toy that was currently under production or was planned, was shut down. It was never going to happen. This includes, among others, the fan favorite Deluxe Dragonzord, which, oh my god, in a quick aside here, we have been bugged so much at Collection DX. When are we getting the new Deluxe Dragonzord? When are we getting the... It never happened. It never will happen, okay? Just, sorry. It's all about when Saban took back the rights to the series. Pretty much everything that was on Bandai America's drawing board was wiped clean, so we're never going to get that deluxe Dragon Sword. Anyways, getting back to it, a lot of people, including myself, thought that that would include the Retrofire line, because we hadn't heard anything about it. The second wave of Retrofire Megazords, the Titan, the Thundersaurus, and the Valve Max Megazords, never happened. So, oh, I guess it just wasn't as popular as we thought, and it's been discontinued, and... And with the early conclusion of the Power Rangers toy line in 2010, that was pretty much the nail in the coffin. So imagine our surprise when at the 2011 New York Toy Fair it was announced that Retrofire was coming back. A lot of people, including myself, rejoiced at the thought of the return of such an iconic toy line. This is good. This is good news. I mean, a lot of people liked Retrofire, and hey, even I liked Retrofire. I said as much the last time. It's a good line. I, I, I would really like to see more of these. I think Bandai did a very, very good job with these. It's unfortunate, though, that we had to wait two years in order for them to continue the line. Here's the interesting part, though. Even though we didn't get the Titan, Thundersaurus, and Valve Max Megazords, they were all planned more or less at the same time as the Mighty Morphin, Wild Force, and High Octane Megazords. They were all planned at more or less the same time, because they all came out at about the same time. Or at least they were supposed to. But here's the interesting part. Right here... It's, it's fuzzy, obviously. This says copyright BVS, which is Walt Disney Television Studios, uh, was it Buena Vista Entertainment, whatever it is. That They're the ones who hold the copyright in 2009 and 2010 for Power Rangers. Down here, Bandai, Amer or, I'm sorry, it just says Bandai 2009 made in, made in China. Bandai made in China, I don't care. Copyright BVS... And 2009 is what interests me. That means that the Retro Fire Delta Squad and Jungle Pride Megazords were designed and built two years ago. That means that these are not second generation Retro Fire, but rather first generation Retro Fire. These were all designed and built at the same time. They designed and built eight of these things. But we only got to see three of them, and then because of the shakeup at Bandai America, when Saban took back the rights to the franchise, these were simply were released two years later. Which means that these two toys were not designed with the success of the Retrofire line in mind at Bandai America. There was no commentary, no feedback, the sales had not been done yet when these were designed. And that ultimately leads to the biggest problem that I have with the Delta Command Megazord. Delta Squad Megazord. Ah, I did that in the previous take, too. God. This is definitely a first-generation Retrofire Megazord because it's got that asymmetrical arm design. Now, the one thing I don't like about action figures, not that I collect action figures very much, 
But there's one kind of subcategory of action figure that I really don't like, and that's vinyls. Vinyl figures, you usually find these in Japan. And these are usually very static looking, standing straight and tall. They have a neck, they have shoulders, and maybe they have waist articulation. That's it. It's just straightforward, backward, twist a little, and that's it. But the one thing I don't like about action figures is when they have a wide variety of posable joints to them, and yet the toy is specifically designed to achieve a limited number of poses. Yeah, it has shoulder articulation, it has elbow articulation, it even has wrists. It's got all these things, but this hand is only designed to hold the rifle. This elbow is only designed to point in this position. This elbow can't move at all. That's why this thing is here. That's why this thing can twist. This figure was specifically designed to hold that pose and nothing but. And that was something that a lot of people, including myself, complained about with the first generation retrofires. It held a limited number of poses, which just, you know, not cool. But then, on the other hand, we have the Jungle Pride Megazord, which has symmetrical joints on it and is very poseable. I mean, this thing's so flexible, you can come up with as many poses as you want to with it. And it also comes with series-accurate accessories and those giant claws, which are beast. Whereas the Delta Squad Megazord's just kind of... Eh. So, okay, I could see I'm spending more time on my commentary than I am on actually reviewing the toys. Okay, so final conclusions. Delta Squad Megazord. Pan applications are very poor across the back and the asymmetrical arms. You can get it if you want to, and I'll still keep mine, but the biggest reason, literally the biggest reason I got this was because of the Lulwut rifle. I mean, that's literally the only reason why I got it. Yeah, it's the Delta Squad Megazord, which, eh, okay. And it looks kind of nice. I mean, it can achieve some nice poses with the legs, but seriously, it's the lack of articulation in the arms that just really puts a big damper on it. And as for the Jungle Pride Megazord, yes. Yes, 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 yes. That, Bandai America, is how you want to make a retro fire Megazord. That right here. This is, for lack of a better word, perfect. This is what a retro fire Megazord should be all about. You expanded a feature which was just, you know, previously a little... What the hell is this? This, this is nothing. And, by the way, they didn't even use it in the show. That was good. And you gave us this thing, which is nice. But... The key here is that the articulation is necessary. This does everything that an action figure should. You, I mean, it isn't set up for a specific pose. I never wanted it to be a limited number of poses. If I wanted to do a limited number of poses, I'll just go back to these guys. No, I want it to be an action figure. A regular, what is this, 4-inch action figure, just like you've been doing for the last, what, 16 years now? 15, 16 years, something like that. I want an action figure of a Megazord, okay? Bandai America, listen to me very carefully. If you make your Retrofire Megazords as good as this, I, Ava Unit 4A at least, will continue to buy them, okay? Keep making them like this, all right? Please, please do, okay? If you keep doing this, I might not get it next time, okay? But keep doing it this way, okay? That That... This is crucial, okay? You've done it, okay? You've proved you can make a good figure. Do that again. However, I must caution you on this Bandai America and Bandai Creation. There is such a thing as overcompensation. Either in late February or early March 2011, up on the official Power Rangers homepage, there's a picture of the upcoming Retrofire Samurai Megazord. Now, because the Samurai Zords, or whatever they're called, they're kind of like origami-shaped Zords. You know, they kind of look like folded paper or something like that. That's a pretty stylistic thing. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. But the picture of that Retrofire Samurai Megazord is just... Ugh. 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 Oh, that's just... Ugh. Ugh. That's nasty. To make it go away. You know, yeah. That right there is overcompensating. That's taking it to an extreme, okay? That is making changes where you don't need to make it changes. 
make it articulate, give it the right weapons, but just the visual style of the Samurai Megazord was cool enough, but that Retrofire, I'm telling you right now, chances are if, if that is the final design for the Retrofire Samurai Megazord, I'm not going anywhere near it. Okay, that that's just, oh wow, that's disgusting. Besides, I already have my 4-inch Shinken-O, which I imported directly from Japan, which is awesome. Like, if this is awesome for Retrofire, this is like Dream Come True Retrofire, which has die-cast metal, PVC, ABS. This thing is a dream come true. This thing's awesome, but it's not ever going to see the light of day in American stores. I can tell you that right now. So, so... This is great. This is fine. This is what it should be. I mean, you took everything here, the proportions that were weird here, and you made it just right. But but sometimes you don't have to take away the visual style of something just to give us another figure. I mean, don't... If it ain't broke, don't fix it, okay? That's kind of the moral of the story here. And so, this is AVUnit4A for CollectionDX.com, signing off.